Grootrivier Pass on Route R102 played a significant role in the economic development of the Cape Colony and was originally built by Thomas Bain between 1822 and 1823. Together with its sister pass, the Blokrans Pass, they presented some highly technical problems to Mr. Bain, who had to contend with rock slides, mud, high rainfall, shale, unstable slopes, and the omnipresent baboons. The pass starts at the western side of the coastal plateau at an altitude of 221 meters above sea level and roughly follows the contours of the seaward side of the Kalanderkloof for a distance of just under 4 kilometers as it levels out adjacent to the picturesque and sleepy holiday village of Nature's Valley. This is a densely forested region of the garden route where the tall yellow woods tower above the forest canopy and many of them are covered in old man's beard a type of moss commonly found in the valley, giving the trees an eerie look. There are two places one can safely stop along the descent, with the second one being the better of the two. There are lovely views down the ravine, with glimpses of the Grootrafir estuary in the distance. Birdsong fills the air, and if you spend enough time waiting, it's not uncommon to see bushbuck and dakers. The road has been well maintained, unlike the adjacent Blokrans Pass, which is degraded badly and is close to traffic. Some of Bain's original dry stone walls have been replaced by concrete shuttering. Along the descent, the road twists and turns down the mountainside, allowing a natural speed of 40 km per hour. This is not a road to be driven fast anyway. There's one specific hairpin turn within the first kilometer, which is extremely sharp and carries a slope of almost 1 in 6. The descent has a mood and ambiance all of its own. Cape vervet monkeys and chakma baboons are commonly seen foraging in the forests. At the foot of the pass, there's a right turn towards the little village, which fits compactly between the mountainside and the beach. Here, one can enjoy a gentle, tranquil and unhurried life, if you can afford it. The world-renowned five-day-long otter hiking trail ends on the beach at Nature's Valley, and hikers can enjoy the facilities at the rest camp and picnic area at the De Fasolo Nature Reserve, which was incorporated into the Tsitsikama National Park on the 18th of December 1987 and is 2,560 hectares in extent. De Fasolo was brought out from France as a top-notch forestry expert to formulate a plan to control the exploitation of the indigenous forests of the Cape. The low-level bridge over the Grootrafir has an unusual look about it with farm-style collapsible gates on either side. This design was decided on after evaluating various costs and ecological considerations in terms of preserving the ecosystem in the valley. The original crossing of the river was over a drift of loosely packed stones in 1882. Some years later, the drift was crossed over a concrete causeway, but the high rainfall and steep terrain meant the causeway was more underwater than exposed. This caused many traffic holdups as the pass had to be closed frequently. The current bridge was constructed on top of the concrete causeway and the safety gates on the sides allowed debris from floodwaters to pass harmlessly over the bridge. Flooding of the Grootrafir Valley has always been this pass's greatest problem. The road was cut mainly into the shale band which is essentially soft crumbling rock and this means many small rockfalls occur along the pass on an ongoing basis, requiring a full-time maintenance team. Falling trees, strong water flow down steep slopes and baboon activity further add to the costs of maintaining a pass of this nature. The indigenous forests of this area boast Otaniqua yellowwoods, some over 800 years old, and the forest floors are soft underfoot, carpeted by mosses and ferns. The Afro-Montane forest of the Tsitsikama area are the most extensive areas of indigenous forests in South Africa. It is said that South Africa's forests have by far the highest tree richness of any of the world's temperate forests. The one and only safe place to stop on the eastern ascent is the view site near the summit, which provides panoramic views over the Steenwind Rug and Nature's Valley Village itself. This is the best of all the view sites on the pass and should not be missed. The eastern ascent climbs 133 vertical meters over 2.7 kilometers, providing a climb gradient of 1 in 20, which is quite comfortable for most vehicles. Whilst in the village of Nature's Valley, you can stop at the only shop for basic supplies. It also houses a pub and a small restaurant.
In 1948, the pass was widened and tarred. Today, it holds value only to the tourist and pass enthusiasts who enjoy the quiet roads with the big drops and the fabulous views.